This is a quick fix tutorial where I'm focusing only on difficult sections in the piece, applying only those principles that don't require sound imagination skills and will quickly ease your playing, making technique more comfortable and fluent. These basic principles are wrist movement, elbow movement, intonation, arm weight, articulations, phrasing and time. If you've been playing this piece for quite a while, keep in mind that all these principles won't work at full potential, as all sensations might interfere with new ones. Yet they will ease your playing as much as possible in your current situation. This is just a basic fix to let you feel more comfortable while playing, and since we're not imagining sounds, we're not making any harmonies, dynamics or voice and nuances in this tutorial. Match the wrist movement with the known direction. Move gently without any tension. At the last stage of practicing, this movement will be remained in muscle sensations only and won't be visible to the eyes. This will keep your wrist tension free. And a missing fingering in the score before starting playing. While the wrist movement is matching the known direction, the elbow is moving towards the new position on a circle note. This will release tension in hands and improve speed and accuracy in leaps. Hello everyone, welcome to Piano Well. Um, finally, I'm finishing Chopin's complete tutorials with this last two issues, number 10 from the 10th open, opus and number Number seven. I was looking into number six, but <laughs> actually I couldn't find any technical mm, challenges over there, so uh, let's just do it. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start number ten first. <clears throat> uh, very beautiful etudes, and especially it's starting making even more sense when you apply phrasing and movement, so let's just take a look. I'm gonna play with just movement of my wrist and elbow, um, gently touching the key, no pressure at all, loose hands. Like I said before, take your time on the circle now, so you need to move your elbow, so <clears throat> every movement will be in a gentle and relaxed way. No forcing. As you can see here, wrist and elbow contra motion.
always going to be country motion. Reach to the left, elbow gently to the right. Sing in between notes with a glissando and resistance. Keep the same sensation while singing out loud only notes. While playing, keep singing the same way internally. It is possible to sing the same way while playing fast passages. Internally sing with the energy of weight. This is how it sounds without weight versus with weight. Such singing will sustain transferring of weight while playing, bringing more freedom and power to your voice and hands. Okay, now intonation, weight articulations, right hand. I think I'm not the first one who were, written, who were a little bit puzzled with this out of the blue appearing accents like <laughs> so again I made my research going through many editions basically I went through 80% of editions and um, what I have decided for myself that I will treat those accents as the way Chopin wanted to emphasize that you need to make this small slur that it's not da, 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 as it appears later but it goes all the time. So he wanted to um, make those six be more prominent, and that's why accents. That's why I am not making accents as articulations. So everything is just smoothly legato, with good intonation, with good weight. making any slurs because I'm not in the phrasing yet so everything just smoothly legato moving my elbow as big as possible as active as possible Thank you. 
Kim. Phrasing is a structured intonation, breathing, where smaller blocks with more prominent sections are united into larger blocks with more prominent sections. Use intonation and weight in phrasing to make energetic crescendo towards more prominent sections and blocks. While practicing phrasing, take a little break, a breath after every block, and slow down towards the main interval in a motif, the main motif in a phrase, and the main phrase in a sentence. And phrasing. So here is very interesting with the phrasing, as you can see. Those small slurs shifting. First from the sticks, then on the fourth line, from the beat. Now, the way we intonate slurs, we um, bring more weight and more intention towards the main note in the slurs, not to the last interval. So that's why it could be a little bit complicated to feel how, I mean, how to bring more, more intention to the first note. That's why I always uh, suggest to just imagine one additional note before uh, the first note. Let's say it's gonna be, I don't know, this one, as it's written, okay? So let's say we're gonna intonate from A to A to B, so then The same way without singing out loud the first note. So, this way. Uh, very easy. <laughs> will make you feel small slurs just like that. And so, I'm first gonna play by small slurs, not by motifs. This first notes, I mean, sometimes they're written with a slur, but I think in the original they're not slurs, so I'm just gonna leave it. to the last slur everywhere. So last slur in one bar slur is going to be the main, let's say, important slur. <laughs>
but eventually you will see beautiful. <laughs> slurs is united and one big slur as you can see one big slur is our phrase two small slurs are motifs two motifs in one phrase so in every phrase first motif is going to be more important more important in the second sentence. Okay. in the motif, which is this interval through the bar, across the bar line. Time and tempo mean more than just the speed of music, it's a part of the character of music. After choosing the pulsation, connect time to the musical image of the piece, and if the image of music is joyful, feel and describe the pulse not as just slow, but calm and peaceful, 
not just faster, but lively and exciting, not just fast, but energetic and bright. Feel time while playing, always following a phrasing line to sustain the flow of playing. So the time thing is, well, again, <laughs> I go against the beat. Okay, first of all, I am going to say it by every quarter, even though you would want to say probably by dotted quarter, but if I'm gonna do this, it's gonna be very complicated because it's really against the melody. So we're gonna go by two, 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 by one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six quarters. So six beats we're gonna feel in the bar. Again, we're gonna connect it with this emotional image and feel it first. It's very calm and wide. Plus, you make this absolutely shifted melody. It feels so funny when you play. It feels like it's really amazing what he's done here. I'm discovering it right now. Um, okay, let's go faster. Okay, a bit more animated. Finally, match melody with a beat, and here you can go already more smoothly. Okay, left hand. And even here, he put this half note, it's like absolutely against the beat. So I think this is really important to feel the beat, but at the same time make phrasing in the melody. Mm, okay. It feels like a bit jazzy, you know? <laughs> okay. That would be it. So go to our last little.